In this video, we will combine concepts from several previous videos. So three videos ago, you learned how to create two-dimensional topographical maps without any data. And in the previous two videos, you learned how to compute power spectrum at a single channel and over all the channels. So in this video, we are going to visualize the topography of power at two frequencies, 20 hertz, and 24 hertz, as you see here. So this is a different way of visualizing the spatial information of the power spectrum. So the main new aspect in this video is figuring out how to use indexing in order to isolate from the spectrum only these two frequencies, because we're not plotting the entire spectrum. We're only plotting the power at 20 hertz in this plot and 24 hertz in this topo plot. All right, very good. You know the drill. Pause the video, work through MATLAB, and then come back for my explanations. I'm going to start by motivating why we need a line of code like this. Now, I've already explained that this variable here, this vector hertz, or hz, this contains all of the frequencies that we can extract from our data. So if you look through, these are all the frequencies. There's a lot of them. There's over a thousand of them. So if we scroll up to the top, you can see that uh, the first frequency is zero and the next one is 0.25 hertz. So it's incrementing with a frequency resolution of a quarter hertz. Now, the thing is we want to access the power spectrum at 20 hertz and at 24 hertz. However, if we look at the 20th index into the hertz vector, we see that that corresponds to frequency 4.75 hertz. So how do we get to, how do we know which index into, so which element of this hertz vector is 20 hertz? Well, you know, there's a couple of ways we can go about it. We can just kind of randomly poke around and we find that uh, it happens to be index 81 is 20 hertz. But randomly poking around like this is not a very useful or scalable strategy. So instead, what I'm going to do is use this function d search n. And what I input here is the vector of things that we want to look through. And then I want a number and MATLAB is going to return what is the closest or the index of the closest point in Hertz to this number that I specify here. So I'll show you what that output looks like. The output of this function is actually 81, which we have already determined just by, you know, a little bit of trial and error guessing. We've already determined that Hertz of 81, so the 81st element in this vector Hertz is uh, 20 Hertz, the frequency 20 Hertz. Okay, so that's why we're doing this. Okay, so this was for uh, the, the first frequency, which is 20 Hertz, and then we also need 24 Hertz. So I copied and paste, change that 20 to 24. Now it turns out that you can get both of these indices in one line of code by inputting a vector here. If you'd like to try that on your own, then go for it. I'm also going to show you that in the next video. One thing I would like to mention about dsearch n this function is that it is expecting column input. So you can see that this variable Hertz is actually a row vector. So I'm adding the single apostrophe here to transpose it, to transform it into a column vector. If I get rid of that column vector, then MATLAB is actually going to give me an error saying that the dimension, uh, the column dimension should be the same. So if you're using dsearch n and you see an error message like this, then probably the solution is to make sure that you are using column vectors instead of row vectors. Okay, very good. So now we know which frequencies in the Hertz vector correspond to 20 and 24 Hertz. We are now ready to make our figure. So let's see, we have a for loop here. It's looping over just one to two, so it's just two elements. And that's because we're making two topographical maps. So let's see, we specify a subplot and then we draw the topographical map and specify a color limit and a title. Okay, so let's go through some of this. This is clearly an error here. In fact, this looks like the same line of code that we had in the first MATLAB video here. So there we were, uh, remember we created this empty matrix because we didn't actually have any data at the time. Now we have data. 
So we want to plot, remember this is all Chan power. This is the data matrix that we created in the previous video. It is channels by frequency. And so to create a topographical map, we want to plot all of the channels. And which frequency do we want to plot? Well, this is going to be Hertz IDX and then the ith input, or the ith element of Hertz IDX. So Hertz IDX and then the ith element. So this is going to change on each iteration. Okay, and then I also see this is clearly not right. So MATLAB is giving us a little uh, error message here is underlining this at word with red uh, a red squiggly underline. So the issue is that we need to uh, encase this in string because this is a piece of text. Now this is not power at i hertz. This is actually power at uh, whatever you know hertz uh, we specify up here. So therefore, I'm going to break this into two separate strings. So the first string says power at, and the last, the second string says hertz. And in the middle, I'm going to write number two strings, so num to string, hertz, and then hertz idx i, just like this. Now this is still not correct because we are just providing these three pieces of information separately, and MATLAB needs us to concatenate them into one variable. So for concatenation, we use square brackets like this. So this is going to say power at whatever is the relevant frequency inside this loop. Okay, very good. So let's try running this code and see what we get. Hmm. So it's kind of looking okay. So we didn't get any error messages. That's a good sign. There's no warning messages to worry about. But we obviously only get one uh, top graphical map, and it's the one at 24 hertz. So we're missing the one at 20 hertz. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Well, it's something to do with this uh, subplot function. So you can see we are drawing a one by two geometry. So that's correct, one row and two columns. But we have hard coded here that we are using the first subplot. So in fact, MATLAB just put the uh, the second subplot or the second top graphical map directly on top of the previous one. So we can just change this to I and then voila, we get the correct answer. And this looks like what we saw in the slides. So these top graphical maps are really nice. You can see that they show the spatial distribution of power at different frequencies. Now I want to show this slide again this was from the first video so you can see that 20 hertz was shown on the left side of the screen and 24 hertz was shown on the right side of the screen and here we see maximal energy at 20 hertz on the right side of the head and here is overall less power compared to uh, that 20 hertz but it is concentrated over the left visual cortex which is what you would expect the last thing i want to explore in this video is the color maps. So the MATLAB current uh, color map default is called Parala. And I've already introduced you a little bit to color maps in the previous module towards the end. And I just wanna show you a few more. So there's color map jet. This used to be the MATLAB default and is still very, very often used in neuroscience and in many other fields. Let's type help color map. And we can see, actually this is the main thing I wanna show you, type help graph 3d to see a number of useful color maps okay so now i will type help graph 3d and that gives us a list of the default color maps in matlab so let's see we have to scroll up a little bit okay so here we are so there's parallel and uh, let's see we've also seen hot that was uh, something we saw in the previous module and there's a couple of interesting ones you know i like uh, cool that tends to be another nice one color map cool 